This video is going to present some information about Bohr-Rutherford diagrams and how to create them. So first thing we're going to do is uh, just talk a bit about these Bohr-Rutherford diagrams. So what do they show? Well, they show where protons, electrons, and neutrons are found within an atom. There's a couple of rules here. First rule is the sh first shell can hold up to two electrons. It doesn't have to hold two electrons. It could hold one or zero, but it can hold up to two. And our next rule is that every other shell after that can hold up to eight electrons. Now, that is a bit of a lie. In fact, this rule means that we're only going to be able to do the first 20 elements on our periodic table uh, using this method. And uh, that's fine because when you get to the 21st element, something strange will happen and we'll look at that in another video. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. We've got lithium. Um, I've got the atomic number written as three, the mass number written as four. That gives us three protons, three electrons, which is going to be important, and four neutrons. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to write our nucleus that contains the three protons and four electrons, like so. Um, next thing is we'll create a ring. Now we need to fill this with electrons. We know we can put up to two in the first shell. We actually have three, means we can uh, fill that shell up. So we've used up two, we had three in total, that means we have one left. So what we'll do is we'll create another ring and we'll put that final one into that outer ring. Now there's an important definition here that we need to be aware of and that would be the valence electron and the valence electrons are found in the outermost shell. So even though this example had three electrons in total, it only has one electron in the outermost shell. So this example has one valence electron. Taking a look at another example here, we've got aluminum. And uh, so we've got protons and neutrons, 13 and 14 respectively. We'll put those into our nucleus. And we'll go to draw our first shell. So we have 13 electrons in total. We can put two in the first shell. That leaves us with 11 more to go. We'll create another shell. And I suppose if we have 11 and this one can hold up to eight, that we should be able to fill this shell up as well. So this shell holds eight, the previous one holds two. So that's 10 in total that have been drawn meaning we've got three more to put into this final shell here. And those three red electrons are going to represent our valence electrons. Thank you very much.